Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Katie, and today I'm going to be doing a new tag called the Christmas Nativity Tag. So this tag was created by Lou. I will link her channel down below, as well as some of the prompts were from myself and a few other friends as well. So I will link all their channels down below as well in the description box. So this should be a really fun tag. I think it's gonna be fun. So it's a new book tag. I'm really excited. I have all my questions down here. There we go. Okay, so the first question in the tag is the angel Gabriel. A story that shares the good news of salvation. So for this one, I did not put my books in order. Once again, you don't know me by now. I never have my books in order in a tag. All right, so for that one, a book that shares the good news of salvation. I'm choosing Boo by Renee Gutteridge. This is the first book in the Boo series, and I just love it. It's so sweet and, and wholesome and it just has a very strong faith element in it. I just absolutely love the story. And it's about a person who is a horror author and he's well known in the town. And the town is known for that, but he becomes a Christian and he no longer wants to write horror stories. So it's a very cute story. I love it. I love the antics of the characters in the town. And it's just a sweet, non-scary book, even though the cover kind of gives you scary feelings, but I promise you it's not. And I love it so much. Next question is No Room in the Inn, a book that's too big to fit on your shelf standing up. So I'm the one who came up with this prompt and it's actually pretty hard for me to fulfill because my shelves are very, very high. Like I can fit really big books on these shelves. So like the Princess Bride book right there, that one's like one of my biggest ones and it fits perfectly on the shelf. So I think this one can't fit. I'm just going to pick it because it's down here. Let me see. Yeah, it won't. Okay, good. And that is ugh, <laughs> this hunker. It's the Art of Disney uh, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse book. It's in a collector's case, but yes, it does not fit on my shelf. It is huge. So I put it underneath my bookshelf because it's that big. <laughs> and I have to dust under, the, under there. All right not to scare anybody. Okay, so the next question is Wrapped in a Swaddling Cloth, a book that gives you a cozy feeling. So for that one, I chose To Love a Prince by Rachel Hawk. This is the first book in the True Blue Royal series, and this book just gives me a cozy feeling. I just love when a commoner falls in love with royalty. It's, it's like, it's probably my favorite book trope ever, and so this just gives, it's so cozy, and I like the story because uh, her and the prince were were friends throughout their childhood and then they had a falling out. Something happened within their families and then they meet years and years later and she still works for the the um the kingdom. So she works like along with the, with the royal family, but she hasn't really spoken to him in like a friendship capacity in a really long time. But they meet again um by accident. They don't they don't even really recognize each other. And so I just I love this. It's such a sweet heartwarming romantic story. I love it. All right, next question is Manger, a main character with humble beginnings. And for that one, In Search of a Prince by Tony Shao is my book for a character with humble beginnings. It's about a girl who she, I don't even know what she does actually in the beginning. I can't remember. I read this in the beginning of the year, so I don't remember what her job was. But, you know, she was just like just a regular day-to-day -day job. And then she finds out that she's a princess of a kingdom in Africa. So I would say that's pretty humble beginnings for sure. So I love this book. Oh, it's so good. So yes, humble beginnings, that would be the book that I choose. The next prompt is The Heavenly Host Singing, a book with a musical theme. And for that one, I am choosing this book, The Lost Melody by Joanna Davidson Politano. There is a music theme woven throughout this entire book. The main character is a pianist, and she found out that her father, um, after he passed away, she found out her father has been paying money to to take care of a woman in an asylum, and she has no idea who this woman is. So she ends up trying to infiltrate the asylum and find out who this woman is, what's going on, what's happening, 
and it's just it gets darker from there but I love how the music is woven in here I love just the way the music just plays a really important role in this book so I absolutely love it it's it's perfect for a musical theme all right the next one shepherds and sheep a story that contains an animal so for that one actually you know what I might choose this one Steve and Me by Terry Irwin. So this is all about Steve and Terry's life, how they met, uh, how they courted each other. And I just, I love it. So yes, there's talk about crocodiles in this book. I love crocodiles. Steve definitely gave me my love for crocodiles. So yeah, I love this book to pieces. I've read it at least twice and that's rare for me because I don't normally reread books that often, but I love this book. And I will definitely be rereading it again probably next year because I love it so, so much. And also... I think that the Irwin family is most likely Christian because she does have Bible verses and she talks about God a few times in this book, which I absolutely love. So next question, three wise men, a story that involves travel. And for that one, I am going with a portrait of Emily Price by Catherine Ray. And I, I love this book. This is so far my favorite of hers. And it's just really cute. It's a cute romantic love story where it's basically almost insta love, but I don't know. It just works in this book. So this guy who uh, is an Italian, he came from Italy to help his aunt and uncle in their restaurant. And he ends up falling in love with a girl who's an art restorer. And he ends up taking her back to Italy to meet his family and to kind of see, you know, how she likes Italy. And, um, but I, I just, I love it. I love their romance. I love the mother-in-law. She really reminded me a lot of my grandma, which is kind of funny both Italian woman, short Italian woman. <laughs> and so, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was really sweet. There's a paper in here. What is this paper? Now I'm wondering what this paper is. Is it a note? Oh yeah, it's from the author. All right, the next one is gold, a book with gold on the cover. And I forgot to grab one. So this is my choice for a gold on the cover. You can see the gold foil gold foil on the spine. Oh, I love this book so much. Gold foil on the back. <laughs> I just love this book. So this is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I love this book so much. This is the like collector's edition. My One of my absolute best friends gave this to me. So I love it. Love it so much. So yes, that is my choice for gold on the cover. The next question is Frankincense, a book that was gifted to you. And man, I have so many blessings in the mail like this past year has just been such a blessing I could literally pick probably like like I don't know a tenth percent of this whole entire bookcase has been gifted to me probably at least but I decided to go with this one which is Veil of Winter by Melanie Dickerson and Melanie Dickerson is the one who gave it to me so I asked her for if she could send me a book plate to put in the books once I was able to purchase them and she just sent me the third one and she signed it and yes so I absolutely love that she sent this to me a couple months ago and yes so very very special to me since she's one of my absolute favorite authors I love her books so so much all right next question is Murr a book that made you cry okay at first I didn't think I had a book to fill this because my legs are getting tired. I didn't think I had a book to fulfill it, but I do. Um, it's actually one that I read way back in like January or February of this year. And that is Until Leaves Fall in Paris by Sarah Sundin. I cried pretty hard in this book near the end, that's for sure. I am very hard to get to cry. So if it gets me to cry, you'll you'll know it's a good book. The Nightingale, Kristen Hanna, didn't cry. Until Leaves Fall in Paris, which I, I think I read in the, actually the same week as, that, as The Nightingale, I cried. So, I love this book so much. All right, the next prompt is Mary and Joseph, a book with a big surprise. And for that one, I'm going to go with Plot Twist by Bethany Turner. And this book, yes, if you've read it, there is definitely a big surprise. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the ending did get me, so... Just gonna leave it at that but this is a cute rom-com it's about a girl who she's a playwright and she really wants to write a movie at some point in her life 
but she's drinking coffee in a coffee shop and a guy who's an actor comes in and rescues her from being hit on by a, by someone and so they get to talking they get to yakking and he says you know what if you write this screenplay I'll be in your movie let's meet I think like I think it's like 10 years later he goes let's meet 10 years from now yeah 10 years from now and if the move if you have this if you have the screenplay ready, I'll be happy to play in it. So I just, I love it. I love her thinking throughout, like, something always happens every February 4th. And I think that's just so funny. So it's a great book. It's probably my favorites of Bethany Turner so far. I've only read, I think, no, actually, this might be my only one that I've read by her so far. I need to read more. Maybe I've read one more. I can't remember. But it was definitely a really cute one. All right. And then the last one is Jesus. The story with the most Christian content, and for that one, might be quite a few on a few people's lists, would be The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kip by Sarah Brunsville. So I was really hesitant with this book because just because of the title and the content about a woman who is in hospice and a reporter is is you know, she has a job to go interview this lady in hospice and she doesn't want to do it. So I was quite hesitant to read it for those reasons, but I love this book. It's one of my favorites of all time. I absolutely love it, but I love this book so much. It's one of my absolute favorite books of all time. I just, I love it. And this definitely, I feel like has one of the most strongest Christian content out of all the books that I've read, especially this year. Um, In Search of a Prince probably comes to a close second, but this one I definitely like. Uh, our main character Clara Kip she just has such a strong faith in Jesus and even though she's in hospice she, she still shares God's love and his and his salvation and his salvation with everybody well not everybody but yeah probably everybody in the hospice and I just think she is a wonderful character to look up to and I just love it and Sarah Brunsvold is such a wonderful wonderful lady to talk to so yes definitely one of my absolute favorite books Alright, and those are all the books for the Nativity book tag. So I had some really great books on here for sure. I'm not going to hold up the Princess Bride book or the other large one because those are big. <laughs> and I don't want to hurt myself, but yeah, so those are some of the books that I mentioned here. But it was a good tag. This was a fun one. I really enjoyed this one. So thank you, Lou, for creating it and having me join in and uh, a couple of our other friends to have fun with you. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for creating this tag. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And um, actually, this is the last video for Bookmas. I totally forgot. I'm pre-filming. This is the last video for Bookmas. So I hope you really enjoyed it. I will have kind of a um, a kind of a goodbye to Vlogmas, but that's happening like yesterday's video. So I, I might actually switch videos. This could be coming up first, but. Thank you everyone for joining in Bookmas. Thank you for watching and commenting and liking. It was a lot of hard work to edit all these videos, but I had so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And if I get the chance to, I definitely will be doing it again next year because it's been fun. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for just having fun with me for Bookmas. Um, uh, and I forgot to tag some people for this tag. So if you still want to do the tag, it probably will be Christmas over by the time, at least by the time that I'm filming this. But I'm going to tag Book Talks with Mrs. Thomas. I'm going to tag... What else am I going to tag? I'm going to tag Celestria. And I'm going to tag... I'm going to tag Lovely Day with Holly. So I'm going to tag those three a lovely ladies. If you've already done it, then please ignore this. <laughs> but if you haven't, go ahead and please do this video so I can see your answers. And if I didn't tag you, still consider yourself tagged because I would love to see your answers. And all, all of the questions will be in the description box. And if you don't have a channel, please let me know your answers. I would love to know down in the comments. Uh, let me know. I would love to know uh, the Jesus prompt the story with the most Christian content let me know which one you think that would be I would love to see what it is and if I read it or not and probably would add would add it to my list but I love you all and have a wonderful Merry Christmas <laughs>